Welcome back everybody. Today we are making a big fix to our CRZ. We're going to be taking on the uh, IMA battery fan replacement. So, door handle, future video. <sighs> this vehicle does not run and drive. We bought it. It technically was drivable, but we ended up trailering it three hours up here. Um, it's not in the ideal shape for driving right now. And the issue is these check engine light codes that we're getting. So uh, we get a check engine code P0685 for the power relay control circuit open. And after the engine has been running a while, we also get P1448 for the battery module overheating as well as the P1634 code for the drivetrain. Now this seems to be a fairly common issue with the CRZs um, and these combinations of codes and lights uh, tend to lead toward battery issues. Um, when we bought the car, the 12 volt was completely dead, almost zero volts on the battery itself, but I believe the fan, the cooling fan for the hybrid battery is also burned out and non-functional. So even when we got the uh, main 12 volt charged all the way up, juiced up, most of these errors from the different systems are still on because the hybrid battery is dead and the charging system will not activate because the cooling fan is not activating. So that's what we're going to repair today. Now I'm not going to guarantee that if you're getting these codes that the cooling battery is the fix you need, but it's pretty likely that it is. And in any case, we're going to go over the steps of how to access the fan and replace it. Uh, in case that is your issue, so you know how to do the process. Now, if you didn't already know, your hybrid battery is located in the trunk down here, and the fan assembly is back in the corner of the trunk behind all this trim, and it has a couple little ducts that lead over to the battery itself. So these are the panels that we're going to be taking off and accessing. Tools are going to need a plastic trim removal set, if you don't have one. Flathead screwdriver will do. We're also going to need a Phillips screwdriver and a 10 millimeter socket with ideally an extension. A couple of these bolts are tucked away pretty far so you'll need to reach them. First up we're going to remove the trunk liner by pulling it up here. There's two plastic clips that hold this down so we're just going to use a bit of force and pop those right out. Then we're going to pull out our foam inserts from around the spare tire and remove the spare tire itself. Then we're gonna take off this plastic cover by lifting up on it and releasing the plastic pins around the edge. If this is your first time removing plastic body panel parts, don't be afraid to give it some force. This here is our cooling vent, which comes around to our fan here. So the next thing we're going to do is take apart these plastic panels. First, we're going to remove this trunk guard here. This also will just pop straight up from these clips here out of the sides. One optional step is going to be to remove this trunk light from the inside. It's optional because you can take it out now just with a quick pop and unplug it. If you don't do it now, it's going to fall out anyway when we take off this side panel, but if you would prefer to disconnect it now and keep it safe out of the way, go ahead. And now we're going to take off this entire side panel here and pull it to the side. Bend this part upward to reach over. And we have more of the same plastic clips here that just snap into the frame. So I'll just give it a little force and pull straight out. Now if you saw me show the trim removal kit and then not use it, I'll take off these panels. That's because you can take them out with bare hands. What the trim removal kit is really for is pieces like these. They stay in the frame, they slide out from these clips here, and they get stuck on the body. And you'll want to pull those out individually and snap them back into these body panels before we reinstall it. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a bit of a pickle trying to line these up and slide them in while forcing other pins to go directly into their holes. And with that, we have access to our dusty old worn out uh, battery cooling fan. 
Now, uh, if you need to keep access open to this area, you can use something to hold this panel aside. For example, the uh, Honda Odyssey GPS navigation stereo I know everyone has lying around. <clears throat> so now let's take this bad boy out. Removing the original fan assembly is very simple. There's just three 10 millimeter bolts. One here. One here. And the third one is tucked right back here. Before we lift it out, we're going to unplug the electronic connector here by depressing the tab on this side and pulling the connector straight out. Now that our fan is free, all we need to do is loosen this vent uh, piping by pulling up on these plastic clips and we can remove this assembly from the end of the pipe. Once those clips are out, the entire assembly can be moved free. It's not strictly necessary, but if you'd rather take this off, it'll just pop out. Remove so that here, and this is the fan motor we're going to be replacing. So here's our factory fan assembly. This motor is what we're going to be pulling out and replacing. Our new unit is made by Continental. We ordered it through Rock Auto because it was a great price and, uh, more importantly, in stock. And it should be a similar quality to OEM. Uh, this isn't an endorsement of the brand, this is just what we're going to use today. Removing this blower motor from the housing is super easy, it's just three Phillips head screws. Now we're just going to pull the assembly backward out of the housing, and do keep note of which tab has the alignment peg hole in it. Our replacement will fit in exactly the same way. And that's all there is to it. Let's get this back in the car and see if it works. The reinstallation process is super simple. It's just the same steps we performed to get the motor out in reverse. Just a quick reminder, don't forget to plug your electrical back in. Now it's time to answer the all-important question, is it fixed? Uh, I don't really know if it will be, so we're going to start it up, clear some codes, and see what happens. Now we're going to give our 12 volt battery here a little bit more juice with this totally not redneck overkill 14 volt charger contraption, but uh, while it's doing that we've got one more thing to check, and that is our fuses. I don't know if this is the case for my vehicle or not, but I saw mention on some of the forums of fuses being blown when these fans go out, so it's always worthwhile to just go double check and make sure everything is as it should be. We we're lucky enough that this car still comes with the factory fuse puller. It looks like ours is indeed popped. Okay, we've got our battery topped off, our fuse replaced, and our new fan installed, so let's see what happens. Look at that, it's working. Now we've still got an airbag light and a tire pressure light on, but our power steering, uh, our battery charge system lights are gone. Well, we've still got a check engine light on, but our battery is charging, and we're low on fuel. So I say this is a great time for our first actual test drive. 
Well, it runs, and I dare say it runs all right. So we're gonna take it up and see how it does on the street. Go get some fuel and see where we go. Okay, so we've been to get gas. Um, I mean, I have a few thoughts so far. Uh, first up, the steering wheel is crooked. I don't know if that's because we need an alignment or if the steering wheel itself is centered wrong. Uh, also, we still have airbag lights, which is to be expected. This was in a crash, almost guaranteed before we bought it, and I'm guessing the system just hasn't been reset correctly, so. Well, we're back, and I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of concerns and a lot of uh, just things that I had noticed. Uh, there's some clunking in the suspension. We've got a lot of road noise, obviously, with all the missing and bent body panels. Um, obviously, we got to work out the airbag, the alignment. Um, so there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be repaired. But the big uh, thing that is good about today is that we got to drive it. It was on the street, we got it running, it seems to run physically fine, there's no fluid leaks that I noticed, which is great. So obviously, it uh, still needs a lot of work. A lot more to come to get this in tip-top shape, um, but thanks for watching. So today we fixed the IMA battery fan, hope this has helped you. Uh, we've got some more things to diagnose and fix in the future, but for now, that's all I've got. So thank you for watching.